Here's a strategy tip. If you look at the end of the combat phase, when you defeat an enemy, you discard the enemy and the shadow card of the enemy. And then, any enemies that stayed engaged with you, you discard the shadow cards. And these are green steps. And there's no order as far as if you kill an enemy, which card you discard first, either the enemy or the shadow card. Why is that important? Well, if the shadow card is something that you could easily handle during questing next round, maybe it's just a location that isn't threatening, or maybe it's a treachery that doesn't do anything that nasty, when you discard that shadow card, make sure it ends up on top of the deck. Or perhaps the enemy isn't that bad, and you can make sure that enemy ends up on top of the deck. My point is, play Shadow of the Pass. It even has Shadow in the name. Play Shadow of the Pass and move that card that you just discarded to the top of the encounter deck. And that'll be the card that you quest against next round. It makes it so that you can have a pretty easy round in solo. You know what card you're going to be up against. It's a two-cost neutral event. I think it's a little underrated because you can really set up a nice easy turn if you get the right card on top of your deck. So remember... You can choose the order in which you discard the enemy and shadow card of a just defeated enemy, and then the shadow card of an enemy still engaged with you could also be the card on top of the discard pile that you move to the top of the encounter deck. Let's get to the video! Alright, the final quest in the Shadows of Mirkwood cycle is Return to Mirkwood. So to start this one, you find Gollum, and you put him engaged with a player. Gollum has no stats, 5 hit points, damage from undefended attacks. Against you must be dealt to Gollum. If Gollum is destroyed or the player guarding Gollum is eliminated, the players lose the game. And then, here's the bad part, forced at the end of each round, raise the player's threat who's controlling Gollum by 3. Then you may pass Gollum to another player. Then each player is going to reveal a card. So obviously this quest is meant to be played with multiple players, so you can bounce Gollum around and not have the same person raising their threat by three every single round because because that's pretty crazy that's a lot of threat and in my opinion I feel like this is something they were messing around with because this game was the first of its type this was the first cycle everything was made at the same time and I think they thought maybe some quests were going to be more like for solo players and then some quests would be for multiplayer and so they designed quests like that, and then, of course, later they kind of abandoned that and tried to make every quest good for solo and good for multiplayer, even though we all know not every quest scales to four-player very well. But my point is, this quest is meant to be played with two or more players, and trying to play it solo is really, really difficult. In addition to the threat increase, the, it has all the big enemies. It's got the Hill Troll, the Muck Adder, Hummerhorns, and then it adds a new one, Adder Crop, Adder Crop. This thing is terrible. It attacks for eight, and it hat. There's two of those? No wonder I keep revealing them. Okay, it there's two Adder Crops. I didn't know that. So they attack for eight, and they engage the person guarding Gollum, no matter what your threat is. Uh, that Gollum's Bite Treachery is terrible. It's just an incredibly hard quest. And oh my god, there's three! Oh, okay. That, okay, this, this explains a lot. <laughs> so... I had a heck of a time trying to beat this quest with a solo deck using just cards up to this AP and a single core set. And the, one of the main problems is, is that I would like to have three unexpected courages. Well, I only have one because I only have one core set. And then your deck is supposed to be 50 cards. So the two cards that would have been unexpected courage are cards I, I don't really even want. So instead of drawing a very useful card like unexpected courage, I'm drawing junk. And so I, I tried playing this quest a lot of times. I'm going to show you two of the losses, and then we're going to switch to um, a different way to play it and uh, hopefully get a victory. So uh, this first stage, 12 quest points. That's all you need to make, 12 quest points. And remember, i got to reveal a card, so I'm going to shuffle my deck and draw my opening hand first. But this quest is so hard solo. You're, you're battling everything all at once. Um, if you really want to beat it playing, uh, you know, the standard mode, two-handed. Definitely play two-handed. But that was what I did for Dolgaldor. So I really tried to beat this with one hand. All right, what did I draw? Steward, uh, a forest snare. That's great. Trap an enemy. Uh, okay, Snowborn Scout. We all know him. Uh, one of the new cards. So Aeoman, he quests for two. Test of Will. Hennemarth, great. Hennemarth, I get to peek. But... 
This quest is so dang hard because your threat goes up so fast. Oh, great, yeah. So I start right out with a, a two-threat enemy that's going to make me re exhaust somebody. And I make a mistake here. I exhaust Barovor. Um, I could have exhausted Gollum. I had to go back and look at the rules. I wasn't actually sure he was a ally or anything. Like, if I actually controlled him, I could have exhausted him. But anyway, this quest... Because your threat is going up so dang fast, you're basically engaging any enemy that gets revealed. And then, of course, you can't quest as much. So you're going to want to play chumps. So I'm going to put in the Snowborn Scout. He can be a, a chump blocker for me. So he's going to cost one leadership resource. And I struggled, guys. I really did. I played this quest probably... Oh, God. 20 maybe 25 times with different decks, different hero combinations, different cards within the decks with the heroes, and um, I would almost win, and ultimately I would lose. I did win with the killer deck when it was only 44 cards, but I figure at this point you should be able to build 50 card decks, so I had to add six more cards to that deck, and it watered it down. So I decided to peek with Hennemarth, and I'm gonna get a two threat enemy uh, both of these guys are 20 engagement, so they're both going to be engaging me. And I want to say, this was my very first attempt against this quest in a very long time. And I make some strategic mistakes, and I decided to keep this as a video to show you guys, because the more you play a quest, if it's a difficult quest, the more you play it, the better your strategy gets, because you get to know the quest. So I know I'm going to be up against 4, so I just send 4, so I don't basically lose right off the bat here. In future games, I would have not have exhausted Barivor to that spider. I wouldn't have been afraid to have taken one of these undefended on Gollum right off the bat. I definitely took too many attacks with a defender when Gollum could have taken one in my first few playthroughs. And then if these guys don't get a shadow, which they don't, I'm glad it's the hill troll, goodbye. But since they don't get a shadow, they bounce back up to the staging area. Really annoying, and I remember later to damage Theodric. So already I'm in a lot of trouble. And these aren't even bad enemies. These are pretty easy enemies. All right, got to raise my threat by an additional three. But I'm going to be engaged with two enemies again next round. I'm really not going to be able to make much progress. Elfhelm's really cool. So if he's ready and you have to raise your threat by some quest card or encounter card effect, he reduces the amount you had to raise it by by one. And since Gollum raises your threat at the end of the round, Elfhelm will always be ready. So instead of raising your threat by three, you're only, in quotes, are raising it by two. Since I didn't send Theodrid on the quest, I didn't get to generate an extra resource to pay for Steward. Eowyn gets the resource. So that's not good. All right, what did I get? Two threat location, Woodman's Glade. Um, all the locations are basically like two progress, so they're pretty easy to clear if you have a Northern Tracker. So I actually make my first progress of the quest. The wargs are going to come right back down and engage me. Looking back, I should have taken one of these undefended. Barivor will defend one of these guys. That reminds me I should have damaged Theodrid earlier. All right, so Barivor defends. Uh, no shadow, so she's going to take a damage. And then we got to hope the wargs don't get a shadow. Otherwise, I have to once again quest over them. Hennemarth goes away, and the wargs go back up. Ugh, it's like the most annoying enemy. So it's it's hard when you're playing a game like this to really finish it out. I know a lot of people say, like, finish it out, you never know. But really, this, this isn't really looking that good. Okay, this is one of my favorite cards, Shadow of the Past. So uh, two resources of any sphere. Move the top card of the discard pile on top of the encounter deck. So that's really cool. If you have a card on top of your discard pile that's not really that harmful um that shadows of the past can make for a real easy round of questing a real re easy round of everything really all right so i generated four spirit resources finally so i can put in elf helm so now my threat won't go up as fast so i am going to use shadow of the past and i'm going to put this two threat location on top of the encounter deck because I really can't handle another enemy and I can quest over a two threat location I mean to be honest it's not looking good no matter what but at least I know 
Okay, it's only a location coming out. I'm not going to get hit by anything worse than that. Still not really sure how I'm going to pull out of this nosedive. Alright, committing five to the quest. Uh, six with Elfhelm. I'm going to reveal that. Make no progress. I'll travel there. I'm going to once again get engaged by these wargs. Barivor will defend. Looking for a shadow. No shadow, so back up they go. I forget to damage her by one. And then the spider, this shadow, is really annoying. So it was undefended, and so that makes this location become the active location, and you have to move the other active location back in the staging. So uh, that really sucks. All right, end of the round. I only have to raise my threat by two plus one. I draw a strider's path. I can play a forest snare on the spider I'm engaged with. And then uh, I decide to put Aelman into play. So after he leaves play, you ready all Rohan characters. That's nice, but I, just, I need his questing power, so I, I don't want him to leave play. All right, sending as much as I really can to the quest while still leaving enough defenders up, and there's a very good chance I could reveal an enemy that's also going to engage me. Uh, but I don't. I reveal a location, and I got to just leave it in staging because it makes no sense to... Play Strider's Path at this point. Lots of locations and staging. I haven't got a Northern Tracker in play yet. And I forgot since Elfhelm is ready, I didn't have to raise my threat. Because of questing, I didn't want to discard any of my cards. You still deal shadow cards to enemies in the Forest Snare, but you don't have to look at them, you can just discard them. So if you trap the wargs, you don't know, kind of like Schrodinger's, Schrodinger's cat, you don't know if it had a shadow or not, you can just discard it. Alrighty, Elfhelm defended that one, took a little damage. Uh, Barivor can swing back and do a damage to the warg. That shadow card gets discarded. I raise my threat by two plus one. And yep, so my threat is climbing. I haven't killed either of these two enemies I've been dealing with since round one. Faramir, expensive card. So obviously, you're battling everything. Threat, questing, enemies. Very hard quest solo. Alright, let's get Gandalf in play. Gandalf is pretty much going to always drop my threat. Because raising it by so much every round, if you don't continuously try to drop it, you will just threat out. So I'm going to commit characters to the quest now. Gandalf's going to throw his four in. Two from Eomund, four from Eowyn, and one from Theodrid. Gives me 11 against 6. And, yep, yep. Hummer horns. They don't even. I don't even want to focus them in. I don't even want to look at those things. Hummer horns. So once my threat hits 40, uh, they're going to engage me and kill a hero. I do clear the active location. This game is pretty much over. So let's just finish it out. I'll travel to one of these locations that don't require me to do anything terrible to travel there. Deal the shadow cards. Defend with Barivor. Uh, no shadow on that one, so the wargs go back up to staging. They keep their uh, damage on them, but they do go back up to staging. I don't have enough attack to kill the trapped spider. Gandalf leaves play. My threat's going to hit 40, and unless I draw something that allows me to drop it back down, uh, this, this game's over. So we'll end the round here. I'm at 40. And nope, I didn't. I just get a questing character. So that is the end of that game. So I kept trying. I tried these heroes a bunch of times, uh, doing some little deck tweaking. I tried different heroes. Uh, I tried using tactics uh, mixed in so I could get some more attack, but then my willpower suffered. Um, I would come close. Some of the games came closer than others, but... But ultimately I would still lose and it would either be by threat or enemies or a combination of both. So I couldn't even really tech the deck against one specific thing. It just kept beating me up in all sorts of different ways. So uh, let's try it in again and let's see what I got here. Gandalf, Gladrum's greeting. Uh, she quests for two and she can swap out the active. Okay, there's two four cost spirit allies. So I drew a lot of spirit cards, but I drew a lot of threat reduction. So maybe I can just get all this threat reduction in early, really drop my threat, and give me a chance to build up my board state while I'm on 
the first um, quest card of this quest. I'm actually thinking, you know, this might be pretty good. All right. Oh, and I only reveal a location. Okay. This is looking like a good attempt. I think this is uh, attempt number seven. And I draw a shadow of the past, which is going to let me uh, hopefully put a nice easy card on top of the deck. Can't afford anything, but Theodrid will give the resource to to Eowyn, and so she'll start building up some resources to pay for those expensive spirit cards. Maybe I can draw a Steward of Gondor. Uh, looking pretty good. Uh, okay, Sergi Bats, they suck. And then uh, Golem's Bite, deal four damage to a hero controlled by the player guarding Golem. All right, well, that was a fun game. In my opinion, if you only have one core set and the cards up to this quest, then the way you should be playing this quest is in easy mode. And I know there's like this negative connotation about playing easy mode, and I think it has a lot to do with the name. I mean, people hear easy mode and they might think it means like, oh, it's wimpy mode or it's punch a kitten mode. But what if they called it like journey mode or adventure mode? Then it's just a different way to play. So that's how I think about easy mode. And when you have a limited card pool, I think easy mode is a good way to go. And then as your card pool grows, you can go back to this quest and play it in the normal mode. So when you play easy mode, what you do is you pull out all the cards that have the gold ring around them. And then you're also going to start the game with an extra resource on each of your heroes. And Cardboard of the Rings has a in-between mode that we call sleazy mode. And that's where you do one or the other. So you can either just start with the extra resources or you start without those cards in the deck. And then, of course, you can do all kinds of modifications in between those modes. Maybe you randomly shuffle in half of those gold ring to cards. Whatever. It's okay. When your card pool is not at the point where it's going to be at the end of the game when you've collected, you know, all of these adventure packs and deluxe boxes, it is hard to beat some of these quests, especially a quest like this that is designed to play multiplayer. So I'm going to play easy mode. I'm going to see how well I do. I can tell you right now, just because I'm playing easy mode, the quest does not take an easy on me. I still have a heck of a time against this. So what do I get? I get a shadow cancellation with hasty stroke. I get a two cost lore ally, a northern tracker to help clear locations, a dwarven tomb to pull back a spirit card, and another northern tracker. And right off the bat you can see the advantage of playing this mode because I'm going to be able to put steward in play on turn one and then that's also going to help me pay for those expensive spirit cards and it's just going to give me a, a little bit of a boost okay great so it's just a two threat location that takes two progress to clear it and I have northern trackers in hand so I, it, it just gives me a fighting chance and I get all right shadow of the past nice so okay what am I going to do here I got two leadership resources so that'll let me play steward of Gondor I will play Steward of Gondor on Eowyn. Eowyn will now have four resources, and she will play a Northern Trekker. Since I have uh, two lore resources, I might as well get another ally in. And so I play the Erebor Hammersmith. And now we're going to head into the quest phase. All right, Eowyn's send going as well, so I am sending six against two. Northern Trekker places the progress. Theodred gives a resource to Eowyn. And I reveal a two threat location. So I'm going to make to progress and I don't have an enemy to worry about which means I can use Barivor to draw some cards and I need to draw a threat reduction that's what I'm looking for that's the only thing I'm missing at this point so just give me one of my five threat reduction cards all right I'm glad to see Hennemarth I'm glad to see the sneak attack so when I do eventually draw Gandalf I can get him in for cheap and so yeah as long as I can drop my threat uh, I'm gonna do okay so my threat goes up by four Eowyn gets a bunch of resources, uh, not threat reduction, but a, a two willpower quester. So if you have an active location, when she comes into play, she can swap it with something in staging. All right, let's get a second northern tracker in, which is really good because now I can clear out uh, any location that has just two quest points when they both commit to the quest. So that's going to be pretty huge. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to clear everything out of staging. And then, you know, I do have that Shadow of the Past, and it might be worthwhile playing Shadow of the Past right now. Give, uh, Theodred gives himself the resource. But if I play Shadow of the Past right now, I can move one of these locations back up, because there's an action window right now. So I'm going to do that. 
I'm going to, before I reveal the encounter cards, whoa, okay, come back, all right, before I reveal the encounter cards, I'm going to take an action, spend uh, two resources of any sphere, and put the card on top of the discard pile on top of the encounter deck. Let's just, let's just take advantage of having Shadow of the Past and clearing a location. I don't want to deal with an enemy right now. That's why, I, Shadow of the Past, I just love it. It's just a really good card in solo. Okay, so I'm going to make a lot of progress. Northern Tracker is going to clear those next round. I draw two cards. Uh, still no threat reduction. So Escort from Edoras and Snowborn Scout. So Snowborn Scout, when he enters play, place a progress somewhere. And then Escort from Edoras, when you quest with it, it basically quests for four. And then you have to get rid of it after, the que after um, questing. And another Snowborn Scout. So I'm getting lots of location management stuff. Which is great because I'm only dealing with locations right now. Alright, so my threat is already at 35. Let's play Henemarth. He lets you peek at the top card of the deck. So this quest, you know, you don't turtle. You just you try to get through it as fast as you can. Alright, West Road Traveler. So after you play it from your hand, you can do the switch. So she quests for two. Very nice. And let's uh, take a peek with Henemarth. All right, and we get another location. It's a three-threat location that has two quest points. Okay, great. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Northern Trackers clear the active. Uh, not the active. Northern Trackers clear the location and staging. So now I'm only going to be up against three threat. Theodrid gives himself the resource. And yeah, I just made a lot of progress. I just made six progress. That's enough to clear the first quest stage. And we go to stage two. 2A just has flavor text. Uh, this side here has three quest points. The player guarding Golem cannot commit characters to the quests unless you're the only player in the game. And then if you do quest unsuccessfully, Golem escapes and the players have lost the game. So I got to make three progress to get through this stage. Since I'm the only player, I can commit characters to the quest. Uh, I'm up against just three threat next round that I know of, so no need to travel there. I can clear it with the trackers. Uh, Barivor is drawing me two cards. Uh, okay, so I get some condition removal and another four willpower ally. But where is my threat reduction? Like every other game I've played, I have played... Dozens of game by by this point, and I've always had threat reduction at this stage without triggering Barivor's ability. That's all right. Okay, well, you saw I drew Elfhelm, so now I, I can get him in play, and I'm only raising my threat by an additional two instead of additional three at the end of the round. So that's going to be helpful, only dropping, only increasing my threat by an additional two instead of three. Still sucks raising your threat by that much, but that's all right. I am sure I will draw threat reduction soon here. Okay, so if you've played this quest before, you know what happens at stage three. So I'm trying to figure out what cards do I want to get in. Um, I'm going to take a peek before I play any more cards. And it's another two threat location. So the encounter deck has definitely taken it easy on me so far. No enemies. Of course, it helped playing that Shadows of the Past to guarantee no enemy. Let's trigger Barivor, see what options we get. Still no threat reduction. All right, let's go to the quest. So I'm committing Ao and Theodrid. Two northern trackers to clear that location. I'm revealing two. I only have to make three progress, and I'm only up against two. So that clears that. And we go to the next stage. Nothing on 3A. This is seven progress, and the player guarding Gollum cannot play cards from his hand. So you want to make sure you get your board set up before you advance to this stage. I felt pretty confident with the board state I have. All right, so... Elfhelm still in play, so I only have to raise my threat by 2 plus 1. And what do we get? Test of Will. Won't be able to play it, no matter what I reveal. Collect my resources. And now we're just going to be committing people to the quest after I take a peek. So what do we got? Okay! An enemy. And it's a big one. It's a hill troll. So I'm going to be up against 1, basically, because the Northern Trackers can clear that location if I send them but I need now to make sure I have a plan for combat 
After doing a lot of math, I realize I can't quite kill this hill troll even by sneaking someone in during combat, because I don't have a Gandalf, and I'm just going to send the trackers on the quest, get rid of that location, so I'm only questing against one. So I send eight, I'm up against one, I make exactly the seven progress, and now I'm going to advance to stage four. 4A has nothing on it, and then uh, 4B just says two quest points at the beginning of the combat phase, everything engages me, and then I have to kill all the enemies if I want to defeat the game. So that's why, even if you're doing well with a non-combat deck and you're able to avoid the enemy somehow, you still have to kill them even if you kept them up in staging. So that's just why this quest is just so dang hard. Alright, so like I said, I don't have enough to kill this hill troll. He's going to attack... And I get a shadow that would put this wolf rider engaged with me. I don't want to get engaged with another enemy. So, hasty stroke, cancel that shadow. No wolf rider for me. Uh, the hammersmith's going to die, and the hill troll does threat um, equal to excess damage. So, four damage basically went through to the hammersmith, one for defense, three for hit points. So, I had to raise my threat by two. I'm at 44, which really isn't great. So, I'm going to do as much damage as I can and ding the hill troll here for three. One, two, three, four, five, six with three uh, defense. So three damage on the hill troll. And we're gonna go to the next round. My threat's gonna be 47, so I have to win this round unless I can draw a threat reduction. I can't believe I haven't drawn a threat reduction. Five cards out of the 50 are threat reduction cards. So, you know, law of averages, one out of every 10 should be a threat reduction card, and I've been drawing extra cards of Berivor. Oh well. Okay, so I get Faramir. Uh, I just gotta win this round. So, even though I'm playing easy mode, this quest isn't taking easy on me. If I don't win this round, I lose. So looking at my hand, I'm just gonna try to figure out what's the best play to get the most attack power in play. Um, I, you, you also notice I haven't drawn any stand in fights. I don't have Bjorn in my discard pile, so all my normal combat tricks uh, haven't played out. No Gandalf. So I will play these two Escort from Edoras's, um, spend Eowyn's resources for those. Between the two of them, they can quest for eight. Don't need Hennemar. So let's take a peek. Uh, okay, I'm going to be up against a location. That's good to know. I was trying to decide, do I need to get Faramir in play right now to boost somebody. It was tricky. Like, I, I really had to math it out because most of my allies don't have much attack. So it really came down to uh, math the game and knowing I don't have another enemy coming uh, really helped. So I can use Eowyn's one attack instead of Henemarf's. And I realized I don't need Barivor's. So I just hoped maybe a Gandalf something... But I think I got it. I have Hasty Stroke, so as long as I did all my math right, which sometimes, you know, you, you get to combat and you realize you math something wrong. So I'm going to just flood the board of as many allies as I can afford, and we should be good to go here. I think I got this game won, unless, like I said, I did some math wrong. So I'm going to send eight with those two allies. I reveal uh, location. That gives me my two progress that I needed. Um, I should be discarding those allies from play. I forget to do that. And then the hill troll is going to attack. I will defend with Elfhelm, no shadow. Elfhelm dies. And I have to raise my threat by one. Because, you know, that's the other thing. I couldn't just chump it. I needed to make sure I defended with somebody who could soak up most of that damage. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine exactly. Three of it's used up for defense, which pushes the other six through, which means I get the victory. There we go. I got it. So um, even though it's called easy mode, it definitely didn't take an easy on me. And it was still a very fun game. So I would say if you're in the same situation as I was playing, one core set cards up to this adventure pack um, and you don't want to play two-handed, try it in easy mode and it will still be a very fun quest and you'll still have to work really hard to get that victory. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.